great. And, and how hard was it to, to uh, give up uh, Teoscar Hernandez after all he's done for the organization? Yeah, I mean, Teo has been incredible for us. I mean, from 2017, from when we acquired him, the excitement he's brought to the field, he's been a huge part of this transition for us from going to, uh, you know, an interesting team to a, a contending team. Uh, obviously has a lot of strong relationships here, including one with me, I think the world of them. So we, we will miss them. Uh, we, we got to the point where, um, you know, we felt like the acquisitions on the run prevention side would help us. It does create some flexibility for us as well uh, in terms of resources and, uh, you know, thinking about where we had depth, there was an opportunity to move. There was a, a pretty, decent market for Teo, as you would expect. And so we, the opportunity made sense for both teams. No trade is ever easy and always comes down to alternatives for both sides. And, and fortunately it, it worked out that uh, made sense for both teams. You mentioned the flexibility. This would seem to set you up for some future moves. Do you already have an idea of what those moves are going to be? Or is this more about opening a bunch of doors and a bunch of scenarios for you as this offseason plays out? I, I mean, I think closer to A than B in, in terms of your questions. I, you know, I think we we have a decent idea over the last several weeks of where the opportunities are going to be via trade, via free agency to make our team better. As we continue to look for pitching, continue to look for uh, a more versatile offense and, and to complement our defense. So we a lot of our focus has been on the run prevention side and this created an opportunity for us. Cool. Thanks, Ross. All right, Thanks. Greg. We'll go to Ben. Thanks for the time. Can you hear me? Uh, can you hear me, Ross? Hey, Ben, can you turn your volume up a little bit? Uh, let's see. Any better? Can you hear me? A little higher. Got me now? Is that worse? Sorry, everyone. There you go. Yep, better? Okay. Yep. Um, so, yeah, so um, wondering, how do you see your outfield at this point with Teoscar gone? Is that, a, is that something you identify as a clear need? How, how would you uh, assess that? I see it more of an opportunity. We have five players that we feel very good about going out there on a uh, regular to semi-regular basis. Obviously, with with George and Lourdes, feel very good and feel like there's opportunities with uh, Whit Merrifield, with Kevin Biggio. Uh, there's there's going to be playing time with the with the group that hit is here already. So. Um, you know, we'll continue to look to complement that. Also, you know, that we recently protected Nathan Lucas, who we're excited about. Uh, but there are opportunities to add to our team there via trade, trade and free agency. And we're in a better position to do so now uh, from a resource and from a, uh, you know, just playing time and recruitment standpoint. For sure. And then um, on the bullpen side, I mean, Last week, uh, it seemed like you guys were being pretty aggressive in that market, but at the same time, it's not as though you have like five openings to fill in the in the bullpen. So with Swanson in place, how, how do you assess that? I mean, do you guys take a step back on, on that part of the market for now, or, or how do you characterize it? Yeah, I think we'll keep trying to get better. Um, I mean, I can take, I think, out of that sentence, we will keep trying to get better. Um, and uh, depth is everything in that market. And with Eric Swanson coming off a, a really remarkable year, you know, getting both sides of the plate out on a regular basis, a very high strikeout rate with a well above average weapon in his split. We feel his fastball plays above average with a, a slightly above average slider that attacked right-handed hitters and left-handed hitters exceptionally well. He'll complement us well, could pitch really in any inning for us. And uh, the strikeouts are big. We That's uh, been talked about a lot, uh, obviously for, um, you know, for some good reason that that's an opportunity for us to improve. And, uh, but at the same time, <clears throat> we're, we're never done. Uh, but the, the more depth you have uh, sometimes does create a little bit of, uh, you know, opportunity costs or lack of flexibility that will always have to be factored in. For sure. Thank you. Okay. Ethan. Hey Ross. Um, with Hi. Swanson, do you have any concerns with his track record? Maybe, I mean, he was great last season, but, you know, beyond that, he's still relatively unproven. 
yeah, his, his peripherals have been good. The strikeouts have been there. Uh, the stuff has been improving and feel like we have him at, uh, at a, a very strong point in his career and he's still very young. So I, you know, I think that the case with relievers sometimes is that it, there is some level of transition, especially through a pandemic, but uh, his weapons project to be continuing to pitch well. And what he did over the course of an entire year last year is very encouraging for us. And then I guess on the outfield side of things uh, with tail gone, you know, is how does that affect George Springer's position in center field? You know, is there an opportunity, let's say, for him to move to right field if a better option at center field presents itself? It's, it's a great position to be in, feel very good about him in center field. And if there if that does present itself where, um, you know, there's a everyday center fielder or center fielder that can add at, that we can add. Uh, if it makes our team better, I know George will be open to it. Thanks. All right, Ethan. You're up, Keegan. Hey, Ross. On the uh, financial aspect of this, obviously, with uh, Teo had been heading uh, for a big arbitration year, how big of a factor was that for you? And what opportunities does that open up for you now? How are things different for you financially? Well, the, the great thing is, is that we didn't need it. Uh, we, we've had so much support from Rogers that that wasn't a driving factor, but it's still a benefit. Now that is increased flexibility and increased opportunity on our roster. And in terms of the bullpen as a whole, um, how you view that group right now, obviously a lot of depth, uh, coming from last year, but do you see a need or a complementary piece or a reliever type that you still need in there? Or how do you look at that group? Yeah. I mean, I think the, uh, in a ideal world that, you know, we're not competing against 29 other teams. And if we could just have our way with acquisitions, then we would uh, be looked to acquiring at the higher end of that market uh, for more significant impact, but don't feel like we absolutely have to, or need to by any means. All right. Thank you, Ross. All right, Keeks. Your turn, Caitlin. Hey Ross. Uh, last week we you were talking about how at the GM meetings there was maybe a lot more discussion on trades happening just because of the nature of it. I just wondered, uh, as much as you're willing to share how this deal maybe came together, was groundwork laid out last week? Or sure, yeah, there was. There was a lot of there was a lot of interest, and then you you work through uh, exchanges to determine just how significant the interest is. Uh, it came down to three, maybe you could say four teams that had that level of interest. And uh, in the end, it worked out that Seattle put the best offer in front of us uh, or accepted the best offer that we made. Uh, but there there was several teams that that had interest in this market uh, for right handed bats like Teo. He was one of the better hitters in it. And we are fortunate to have some depth in that area. And just on moving on from Teoscar specifically, you spoke a little earlier just about how, you know, all trades feel big, but certainly with him, he's kind of been a core piece um, of this team and how you guys have been building. I just wondered with him moving on, does it feel more significant for you? Um, well, any, any trade is difficult. All relationships, you know, over time when you're, when you're parting ways um, it, it's always difficult um, you know, the, the thing that's been so, uh, exciting about Tay Oscar is the level of joy, uh, that he plays with and the smile that he brings to this game, what that means for the Toronto Blue Jays, what that means for his teammates and, and the clubhouse has been significant. He's also been extremely productive, especially over the last three years. He was remarkable in the shortened year, had a well above average offensive year last year or the year before in 2021 and had a very solid year in 2022. Um, so he's been a big part of our transition and towards contending and, and he will be missed. Um, I mean, in terms of significance for me, I, I, I think of it in terms of the organization and what we can do to be better, what we can do uh, to take a step forward. And sometimes it comes with tough decisions. Thank you. Sure. You're up shy. Hey Ross, uh, moving moving to Oscar. I'm wondering one, how you anticipate replacing some of that lost production, or where do you envision some of the lost production that he provided coming from? And with moving him off, does that 
prevent you or maybe change your perspective on perhaps moving other established players off your roster uh, from your lineup at this point? Um, so one, I, I think, you know, we will be able to replace it with some of the players that were either not playing as much last year um, or from within and from the player development system. But there will also be other opportunities via trade and free agency, as I mentioned earlier, and we will exhaust those. Um, secondarily, making it more difficult, sure, um, somewhat, uh, but it just depends on the return. If the return is towards your major league team, then it doesn't really, uh, this past trade doesn't impact the next one. And just uh, in terms of Teoscar, I mean, you mentioned the interest in him, which is understandable. And obviously he's coming up on free agency. Uh, how much of this was perhaps you, uh, or your consideration in terms of moving him you guys perhaps not aligning on a longer term extension or, you know, a sense of making sure that you needed to get something significant on the asset before it potentially expired. Um, it really wasn't that much of a factor felt like that could have been there and, and still is. So we, the, the potential of him being a blue Jay in 2024 still remains unless he gets extended by Seattle. So um, that wasn't a driving factor for us. All right. Thanks, Ross. All right, Chad. Uh, you're up, Mike. Hey, Ross. Um, we were talking a lot about Swanson and 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 about Tay Oscar. How does Mako figure into this? Is he more than a lottery ticket? Is he someone that you guys have had an eye on? We we loved him in the draft um, and continued to value him. Our pro scouts have really good reports. The pitch grades are fantastic on him. So the overall evaluation of the uh, you know, objective measures of his arsenal are all above average. He has three above average secondary weapons with an above average fastball. Um, he has not logged in an, uh, an entire uh, season of innings would be probably the, the reason he was available. So, uh, you know, I think if we can put him into a position where, you know, he can sustain and haul a, a full season of innings, he could become easily uh, one of the better prospects in 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 baseball. He's uh, got the arsenal to do that. So, um, like <clears throat> with any trade, there's risk, and he was, uh, you know, a prospect that we've had our eye on for some time, and we're very fortunate that he was available. And uh, earlier, you mentioned that there are five you have five guys to throw out in the outfield, and then Lourdes and George and. Uh, Kevin and Witt is the fifth guy Lucas or Otto Lopez or somebody else? Lucas. Okay. 